Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Paradise. Glad to have everybody here today. I might have you look at the back of your bulletin. I'll just go pretty quickly. We got a busy day today with communion and the choir special. Uh, announcements, uh, I don't think there's anything, well, yes there is. I know the missions uh, team is meeting today after church, um, so if you're a member of that committee, please plan to stay. Prayer group and Sunday school at their normal times uh, this week. And then the church council meeting, um, we're uh, planning to meet next Sunday at noon. Our main items are to approve the budget for the coming year and to start working on our year-end reports for the conference. And then the mission opportunities for December, uh, we're gonna be doing facial tissues for the food pantry, and the monetary collection will be for our shut-ins of the church. And you'll see the prayer list there. Uh, what other joys and concerns do you have, though? What's on our hearts today? Need to keep uh, Corey, obviously, in our prayers. Uh, the procedure that he had Friday went very well. His heart has reestablished its normal rhythm, and he seems to be doing well. They're still looking for a skilled nursing facility for him to go to, but for right now, he's stable, and everything seems to be doing, going the way it's supposed to be going. So, any other joys or concerns? What? State yes, Smithville Go State Warriors. Champs. Go Warriors. That was great. They put. Oh, they won too. Yeah, good deal. East Buchanan won, won as well yesterday. Looks like uh, the prelude today is I heard the bells on Christmas Day, and you can see Nancy's music notes about that on the back of the bulletin.
Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Nancy. Good morning. Welcome to Paradise United Methodist Church. I'm Rob Ernest, your pastor in Paradise. Be on your best behavior today because you're live on somewhere. Where are we? Are we on? We're, we're, uh, we're uh, fleshing out the uh, live stream today. And uh, supposedly, we're live on the website at cometoparadise.org and uh, maybe on Facebook and YouTube. I'm not sure about that, but I um, wanted to let you know that that is in the testing phase today. So be on your best behavior. Okay. Uh, also notice there's the camera right there. So uh, right there, right up on top of that corner. Hi. All right. So if, uh, you know, if you don't want to be on camera, don't get right there. So that, we'll leave that out. But there will be other things coming along. And I just want to say a uh, big thanks to our, our techies. We have a couple of techies back in the back, back here. Ken Homer and Marty Rowe. There they are. <laughs> uh, and they have, uh, they've put up walls so that we can't get to them if anything goes wrong or vice versa. But what a great job that they have uh, done in, in getting this all set up and uh, kind of a testing mode, a soft, uh, we'll call it a soft start in the, in the broadcasting biz as to haven't really publicized it that much. But uh, most folks uh, on our email list know that uh, we're doing it. So hopefully we'll get some feedback on what, what is happening. So uh, we appreciate that today. <laughs> Um, as it continues, this is the Sunday of Peace. So uncover your eyes, uncover your hearts this morning. Prepare for the coming of the baby king. And uh, we'll greet our neighbors with the good news today that there is peace on earth because Christ is coming. Amen? Amen. Let's prepare our hearts and minds for that this morning. Gracious God, you are an awesome God. We praise you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to come together in peace and in love of you and of each other. We ask for the presence of your Holy Spirit to be within us and a part of us as we glorify you and only you at this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you join us in song this morning, our first uh, hymn is Hark the Herald Angels Sing. We'll sing all verses in your United Methodist hymnal number 240. Let's stand as we are able. <coughs> Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the new.
And it is also our Advent, uh, this time we Advent uh, light our uh, peace candle in the uh, Advent wreath this morning. The Easts are on their way up here this morning to do this. Who are, going, who, who are you going to let handle the fire? Okay, all right, this could be interesting. <laughs> the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. The light grows gradually brighter as we move through Advent together. The candle of hope already burns bright. Today we light the candle of peace. The coming Christ desires us all to thrive, patiently wanting us to turn from the ways of sin and death. As we wait for the coming of the Prince of Peace, we want to be ready. Seeking a straight path, we light this candle to guide our steps. Together we prepare the way and strive to lead lives of holiness, goodness, and peace. And in your, uh, the Faith We Sing hymnal, verse 2 of the Advent song, that's the Faith We Sing 2090. I think we have that uh, verse on the uh, screen also. Um, Nancy, would you play through this? Do we need to play through this once? You think we're good? Okay, we're good. Nancy says we're good, so we'll sing this. <laughs> If you would remain standing, turn in your United Methodist hymnal to page 211. O come, Emmanuel, verses 1, 2, and 4.
Made standing for our Apostles' Creed, that is our affirmation of faith this morning, page 881 in your hymnal or on the screen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. may be seated. As we enter into this time of prayer and meditation, let's remember those who can't be with us today because of the circumstances in their lives, be they by choice or by circumstance. Those who are suffering in mind or body or in spirit. In a few minutes, we'll be offered the time to lift their names before God. Also, if you would like to offer these persons to our awesome prayer team, uh, including me, I'm on the prayer team, uh, feel free to do that. There's uh, prayer request cards back behind Lenore and uh, Nancy. Uh, put those in the offering plate or give, stick them in my pocket as you go out the door or um, uh, send a text or an, or an email if you like. So let's uh, begin this uh, prayer time with a moment of silence. God of grace and love, how wonderful it is to come before you now and know that you are listening. We come to you from our own situations, from our own wilderness today, together in worship of you. From the wilderness of pain and sickness, we come to you and lay at your feet the physical or mental anguish we feel. From the wilderness of sorrow and grief, we come to you and lay at your feet the tears of our trials. From the wilderness of loneliness and aloneness, we come to you and lay at your feet the heaviness of our hearts. From the wilderness of guilt and shame, we come to you with open hearts of redemption, asking for forgiveness. God of grace and love, how wonderful it is to come before you now. Know that you are listening. And we don't have to stay in the wilderness. And we have a Savior born to us this day. And he is Christ the Lord. There are others we lay at your feet now who may still be in their own kind of wilderness. We ask, dear Lord, that you would hear our pleas for their healing as we lift their names to you now with our voices. Uh, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Father, for these who have been lifted to you in this way, we do indeed ask for your mercy. We ask for your healing touch to be upon these who are suffering in any way this morning. From pain in body, mind, or spirit, we ask for your healing touch to be upon them. We ask for you to relieve them of these pressures. We ask that you would be with the families represented by those who have been named to eliminate the stress from their lives during these times. Not only for these, Lord, but for those on our prayer request list and those on all lists throughout the area, those that we hold dear and secret in our hearts, we ask for your healing touch, for your arms of peace and comfort to be wrapped around them. We ask all of these things in the name of that one who taught us this prayer, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <coughs> And now, as we worship with our tithes and our offerings, I ask for the ushers to come forward this time. And you have on the screen an offertory prayer by the people. This prayer is written in first person specifically because this is you praying. Let's pray this prayer together. I delight in your love and salvation, Lord. There can be no greater gifts than these. I offer all that you have provided me. May this offering I bring be used to bring your light to those who dwell in darkness. Prepare me and complete me, Lord, in your name. Amen. <coughs> who are young at heart, who are young in body, mind, or spirit. Oh, look here, we have a whole row coming up. All right, awesome, yay. 
<laughs> That's right, right. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. No, they just <clears throat> they just wanted treats this morning, Ben, is what they wanted. All right, I'll see if I can get down here. You think we could get anything else up here around the uh, around the chancel? Huh? Okay. <clears throat> How's the camera? Can you get all of us down here? All right. All right. So, well, let me show you now. I have to get back up again. Gee whiz. I was going to ask Ben if he's ever seen one of these before. Huh? What about this? Have you seen one of these? You know what that is? What about, what about any of this stuff, huh? You ever seen any of, the, any of this stuff? Some of, some, of, some of the girls have seen it. What, well, what about any of this? We got, what, what is this? What is all this stuff? Yeah? Yeah? Oh, there we go. There's the operative word. Some cleaning stuff. Are you going to have any, uh, any relatives around your house for Christmas or anything? Maybe a few. Yeah. So does Dad do any cleaning? Any? Okay. So, so. But when, when folks come for like Christmas and Thanksgiving... There's probably a lot of this going on, right? You know, it seems to be maybe a little bit more than usual. It's it being prepared for those who come around for the holidays. Um, our story today is about a guy, uh, John T. Baptist. You know what the T stood for? D. <laughs> John Baptist, and uh, he was out in the wilderness uh, shouting and saying, "Prepare the way of the Lord." And basically what he was saying was, he, he was saying, prepare your hearts for the Lord. Do you think he was, do you think he was, might have been saying, go to the house and get your broom and your mop and the bucket and prepare the house for the Lord? Eh, maybe. But what he was really saying was, prepare your hearts for Jesus. What do you think, what do you have to do to prepare your heart for Jesus? You know? I'm putting you on the spot here. You don't have to answer. Okay. But I know you know. It's basically to open up our hearts to love God with all our heart, mind, body, and soul, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. That's what we do to prepare ourselves, our hearts, for Jesus. Kind of in the same way that we pre pre prepare our, our uh, homes for relatives and the folks coming in. I'm awfully glad that I know how to use these. I really, I know how. I don't do it very often, but I do know how. I'm a, good, I'm a good manager. I'm a good pointer. But to Jesus is that way too. So what John is telling us to do, John T. Baptist is telling us to prepare our hearts, clean up our hearts, clean up our lives, and prepare. And you know, it's a lot easier, they tell me, that if you prepare a little bit and clean up as the weeks progress, that you don't have to do it all at once. If you're always prepared, if your house is always prepared, clean, then you don't have to make such a big deal out of it around Thanksgiving and Christmas. Same way when, we're, when our hearts are always prepared for Christ, when we're always loving God and we're always loving each other, it makes it a lot easier to be prepared when Jesus comes. All right, let's have a prayer, shall we? Can you help me? Got a lot of help this morning. Dear God, Dear God you're, awesome. you're awesome. Thank you for this day. Thank you for, this day. Thank you for John T. Baptist who helped us prepare the way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let me see if I have treats for everybody. You don't want a treat? You can take their treats? Okay. Well, I'll let you pass out to who, whoever wants treats, okay? You, I know. You're going to... Oh, he's got it. Oh, <laughs> You're going to have to help me up, brother. Ah, all right. <laughs> if you notice in your bulletin, we have something in there called Special Music by the PUMC Choir. Isn't this great? We have a choir. Let me find my, find my music.
<laughs> Check with our esteemed director about that. <laughs> but thank you all who uh, participated. We're having some fun with the choir, and it's uh, wide open. Um, uh, we have, which is kind of unusual. We got more guys than girls in it, which is which is okay. It's all right. But uh, yes, if you'd like to participate in the choir, please uh, uh, let me know, Donna or or whomever, any of the choir members, and. Um, we, we would love to, uh, love to expand it to, to even more. <clears throat> we take to our gospel lesson this morning from Luke chapter 3, verses 1 through 9. Luke 3, 1 through 9. In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region Iturea and Trachonitis, and Lysin Licinius, ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. 
Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is laying, lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Father, we ask for your strength and your guidance this morning. We ask that you would place words in my mouth which would be pleasing to you. We ask that you would sit beside us where we are so that we might understand the message that you have specifically crafted for each one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> the word of God came to John in the wilderness. So what image does wilderness conjure up in your, in your mind this morning? It's different for everybody. Is it barren wasteland? Is it deep untouched forests? Is it the lack of civilization? Is it wild animals? Is it the beauty of nature? Is it danger, the unknown, the unexpected? Adventure? That's it for me. Wilderness means adventure to me. A wilderness adventure. That's what I'd like to go on one day, a wilderness adventure. I'd love to go on Survivor, the show Survivor. Donna says I wouldn't last 30 minutes. <laughs> I would love to go, I'd love to go on Survivor. About the closest I ever came to a wilderness adventure is when I used to go to church camp at uh, Camp Quetzal, back when I was 10, 11, 12 years old. Camp Quetzal was a Methodist church camp up near Clinton, Arkansas on the Little Red River. And mom and dad would ship me off up there every summer to get me out of their hair when I was a kid. And I remember the first summer I was there, and our counselors took us boys out for a snipe hunt. <laughs> you ever been on a snipe hunt, Ben? <clears throat> I'd never been hunting before, so th this was all going to be brand new for me. This was going to be fun. <laughs> Only thing I didn't know was what a snipe was and what we were going to hunt it with. We didn't have any guns or knives or bows and arrows or anything like that. But they said that wouldn't be a problem, that all I needed was a tow sack and a flashlight. Does anybody know what a tow sack is? That's a potate, potato sack, a tow sack. That's all we needed was a tow sack and a flashlight. So we were given those weapons. And the way a snipe hunt goes, or the way it was told to each one of us, would you get your tow sack, and you'd get your flashlight, and we'd hide behind a tree at a clearing at the edge of the woods, and our counselors would go out into the woods, and they would flush the snipes out, and we'd catch them as they came out and run into our sacks. And what we're supposed to do, we, you hide behind a tree, and when one of, you hear somebody holler, snipe, snipe, you jump out from behind the tree, you shine your flashlight, you hold up your toe sack, and a snipe runs in. Pretty easy. That's how we were told things were going to happen. So we met at dusk that evening. All of the boys at the edge of camp, we were given our sacks and our flashlights. And each of us went and hid behind our respective trees. And while our counselors went off into the woods to flush out the snipes. And in about 15 minutes, as it turned dark, we heard the first snipe, snipe. So we jumped out behind the tree. You hold your sack open. You, flash, hold your, you turn your flashlight on. You wait for the snipes, and nothing happened. So get back behind your tree, and wait for about 15 more minutes, and you hear, snipe, snipe! So you jump out behind the tree, flashlight, toe sack, you wait for the snipes, no snipes, and then you get back, and then 15 minutes later, you see how it goes. Well, for the first hour or two, this is all pretty exciting. And I would probably still be out there if uh, one of my buddies hadn't come and got me when lights were out. 
But at least I was prepared, right? I had my flashlight and I had my toe sack. Needless to say, there were no snipes. <clears throat> I'm not much into adventure anymore. About the most adventure I have in my life these days is when I order onion rings instead of fries with my cheeseburger. <laughs> but I admire those who go on adventures. You know, we are in the season of Advent. And the word Advent itself comes from the same root as adventure. But Advent's kind of a churchy word. You know, you never hear it except in the church pretty much. It smells of religion and musty old robes and wreaths and solemn hymns and <clears throat> boring sermons. You say Advent and you watch people's eyes glaze over, you know. But say adventure and folks are all on the edge of their seats. When you hear the word adventure, what do you think of? I think of Indiana Jones and the Swiss Family Robinson and Jules Verne and Columbus sailing on the high seas in search of new worlds. I think of Neil Armstrong landing on the moon. I think of Captain Kirk and the Starship Enterprise boldly going where no one has gone before. Adventure, it's a wake-up call to life. It's a shot of caffeine. Adventure is a snipe hunt in the middle of church camp. Did you realize that we were all born to be adventurers? God's people are created for adventure. Adventure is fundamental to our mission as a church. It's been said that the most basic task of any church is to offer its people a sense of participation in an adventure. Have we been on kind of an adventure this morning? Our common adventure to which we are called, at least as United Methodists, does anybody know? Anybody know? Is to make disciples of Christ for the transformation of the world. That's an adventure in itself. Advent, then, is about adventuring together in the wilderness. John the Baptist is our scoutmaster, and he's shouting the scout motto. Was anybody a scout in here? You know what? Shout it out. Scout motto. Be prepared. Be prepared. Prepare. Get ready. Be ready for anything, because anything can happen in this life. Good stuff. Bad stuff. Snipes. Even love. Even peace. Even the appearance of God. We're going on an adventure in the wilderness, so be prepared. May not be the place some of us expect to find God in the wilderness, outside the church walls, because after all, this is where we keep God. Right in here. Inside these church walls, right? No, no. God's out there, too. God is there in every wilderness waiting for the adventurers. Those of you who do a lot of hiking, those folks have their own words for the experience of finding God. They call it trail magic. And when you've been on the trail long enough, you find it everywhere because you know kind of what to look for. Trail magic is anything good or beautiful or marvelous or unexpected that you find along the trail. It's the experience of going through, possibly, great difficulty and coming to improbable beauty at the end of it. And for those with the eyes to see, trail magic is the very presence of God in the midst, in the middle of the wilderness. <clears throat> Am I saying that you have to go on a nature hike to find God? No, but you do have to hit the trail. You do have to set out on an adventure into the wilderness of your choice. But most of us don't like the wilderness all that much. We choose not to go there. We're into security, and there's all, always an element of risk in a wilderness adventure. We like certainty. We, we, we like to know the plan. We like to know what's going to happen next. And there's always the element of the unexpected on a true wilderness adventure. And we like to give the appearance that we have it all together. We like to look good no matter what. That's one reason I, I play golf. In golf, our motto is, it's not whether you win or lose, it's how you look while you're playing the game that counts. <laughs> but if you're going to spend any time in the wilderness, you're probably going to end up looking a little bit like John T. Baptist. A little wild, a little unkempt, a little disheveled. Ragtag, considerably worse for wear. We don't like to subject ourselves to the possibility of a snipe hunt from time to time. 
We don't like to be vulnerable or confused. So often we avoid as many wildernesses as we can. We don't like to be left holding an empty toe sack. And what are some of those wildernesses? Life is full of them, really, when you think about it. Sickness is one of them. Of course, we, we avoid sickness when we can. But what about those times when we can't avoid it? In my business, visiting sick people is part of the job. <clears throat> and I can tell you there's a world of difference between the person who responds to a discouraging diagnosis with nothing but anger and bitterness and self-pity and the person who responds with the courage of an adventurer. You can tell who is prepared for that adventure and who is not. You can tell who has God in their lives and who doesn't. Grief is another wilderness, especially at this time of year. We're supposed to be happy now, you know. Tis the season to be jolly, fa la 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 la, and all that jazz. A loss during this time of year seems to make it all the more bitter, doesn't it? Whether it's the loss of a loved one, one or of a relationship, or of a job, or of a dream. Our hearts ache more now, it seems. When faced with the wilderness of grief, the temptation is to hide or pretend like it doesn't hurt, to not talk about it, maybe even to cover it up with drugs, alcohol, some other addictive behavior, or simply to avoid situations that cause memories and tears to come. And in the process of avoidance, sometimes we cut off from life or cut others off from us. Adventurers embrace the wilderness of grief, face into it, and force themselves, if necessary, to continue to live. Another wilderness has to do not so much with our own sickness or our own sin or our own pain, but the sickness and pain of the world we live in. There, too, the temptation is just to avoid it. Let's stay in the house. I mean, after all, what can we do about the suffering and the injustice going on, I don't know, in the Middle East, in the poor sections of our country, even in Paradise, USA? What can we do about crime or violence or poverty or abuse? Adventurers know that you pour your heart into hitting the trail with whatever resources you can or have making your own trail magic without worrying too much about the final outcome, without worrying about how it affects our lives or our bank accounts, and it's not our responsibility. That's in God's hands because both our lives and our bank accounts are God's. There are lots of other wildernesses out there, too. Disillusionment is one. Finding out what you thought was the truth actually wasn't true at all. The wilderness of being alone, recently divorced or widowed, or even students going off to school by themselves for the first time. Have you ever thought about that? Marriage is a wilderness sometimes. We lose our way. We get separated from each other. We lose our identities. My wife's closet is a wilderness. I don't dare go in there. <clears throat> Lots of wildernesses out there. But every morning, God's adventurers get out of bed, put their boots on, grab their toe sacks and their flashlights, and continue the trek through life one day at a time, not giving up, putting one foot ahead of the other. Because one of the things that an adventurer learns is that if you keep on walking, Eventually, you're going to get to where you're going. You'll get to your destination. Assuming, of course, that you have set a goal and a destination in the first place. That's one thing we do as a church each year. Very important. We set some goals for the future of this church. Because it's impossible to go anywhere if you don't know where you want to end up. And along the way, who knows? Maybe just around the next bend we'll be surprised by some trail magic. 
And God's adventurers find that there's a real joy in embracing that struggle for peace, for justice, for righteousness, for goodness. There's even joy in suffering for a cause. Because once in a while, a snipe is going to run into your sack. God really blesses those who take up another's cross and make it their own. And those are the times, and those are the ones who, who get beautiful glimpses of the end of the trail. Such is the confidence of those adventurers who have been walking long enough to know that no matter how dark the trail, no matter how many perilous curves, no matter how many potholes, God is the one who constructed the trail we're on. God knows where it's leading. So, where is your wilderness this morning? What adventure are you being called to but resist because maybe you're just a little bit afraid? I can't answer that for you. But I can assure you that you are being called. That's trail magic. That's the presence of God. That's the presence of the Holy Spirit. The God and the Holy Spirit who greets those adventurers who courageously step into the wilderness and follow the path that he has prepared for them. God is calling you, and hopefully it's not to a snipe hunt, but it may be into some scary places in your life or in the life of this church even. It may be into the wilderness areas where you're vulnerable and confused and things are kind of messy. Maybe you're being called to participate more in the activities of this church, Sunday school and Bible school, choir, a new mission activity. Maybe you're being called to help with some type of outreach to the hungry and hope deprived in this very community. Maybe we're being called to unclench our fists from around the resources to which we so tightly cling from time to time in order to feed the hungry and clothe the naked and water the thirsty and give hope to the hopeless. In the Middle East, in the U.S., or right here in Paradise, USA. Such is the call of Advent. It's a call to adventure call of John the scoutmaster. Be prepared. Get ready, he says. Get ready for an adventure in the wilderness because anything can happen. Good stuff. Bad stuff. Maybe a few snipes. Maybe even peace. Maybe even love. Maybe even the presence of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Father, we look to your wilderness and we see scary things sometimes. Sometimes we don't want to go. Sometimes we can't wait to get there. Sometimes we, when we're there, we can't find our way out. But it's your wilderness. It's your path. You have prepared it for each and every one of us. Father, it's, it's our obligation to go. We want to experience the awesome and wonderful path that you have laid out before us. We know it's full of love, peace, excitement, glory, maybe a snipe or two. It's full of friends and those who would be friends. Those disciples that we might meet along the way those who need us to disciple them, those who we would learn from, or those who might actually learn from us. Continue to prepare us for this wilderness throughout this Advent season. We give you the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat>
We prepare ourselves also through the Advent season with one of the two sacraments we celebrate in the Protestant Church, which is Holy Communion, the other being baptism. If you turn to page 15 in your United Methodist hymnal, as I prepare the table for you. <clears throat> almost need another table for the table. Let's go to page 12 in your United Methodist hymnal. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart, we have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory be to God. Amen. And now, if you would go to page 15, to the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. And we lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. When nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ whom you sent in the fullness of time to be a light to the nations. You scatter the proud in the imagination of their hearts and have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You put down the mighty from their thrones and exalt those of low degree. You fill the hungry with good things and the rich you send away empty. Your own son came among us as a servant to be Emmanuel, your presence with us. He humbled himself in obedience to your will and freely accepted death on a cross. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. <clears throat> on the night he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, he gave thanks to God, and he broke it. <clears throat> and he gave it to his disciples. He said, take this and eat this, all of you. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, and he gave thanks to God. And he gave it to his disciples. He said, this is the blood of the new covenant, which is poured out to cover your sins and the sins of many. 
Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> And we have options for you this morning. I will offer you the loaf and David will offer you the cup in the, the cups. You may take the cup if you like and drink from it or you may dip the bread into the cup of juice or if you would rather have the prepackaged uh, elements, they are available here as well. I would ask you also when you come to receive the elements, when you receive the body of Christ, what we do is we come in an attitude of reception, of receiving, receiving a gift. I will place the bread into your hand instead of us taking that. That is a gift which is given to us. These elements, the body of Christ is a gift. So we come in an attitude of reception with our, with our palms open, with our, our hands in a, in a receiving attitude. So if you would, would now, the invitation has been given, the table has been set, I would ask for you to come at this time. <coughs>
And after communion was over, they sang a hymn, and we shall do the same. If you would turn with me to page 230 in the uh, United Methodist hymnal, verses 1, 2, and 4, or on the screen, O Little Town of Bethlehem. Let's stand as we are able. <laughs> Um, and uh, I forgot to do that this time, so we will do that. Uh, if any of this message or any of the previous week's activities have led you to want to continue on a further walk with Christ or find out a little bit more about that, please um, let me know about that. If you would like to join this church by transfer or by profession of faith, you're also invited to come too, if you would. Come on up here, Pam. <laughs> Hi, Pam. Uh, hi. Uh, <laughs> sorry, we didn't, we didn't discuss this as we had pre-planned, but we, we're, we're, we're doing it now. Um, Pam uh, Dickerson is uh, coming to our com uh, congregation by way of transfer from St. Joe, and uh, we will do that officially next Sunday, right? See, we do this to hold her to it. Now she can't get out of it. <laughs> Coming to us by transfer next uh, next Sunday. So thank you for thank you for coming up and, and sharing that with us. And if anybody else would like to do that at this time, you may also. As we sing our closing uh, 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 verse. Now receive this benediction. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now until we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.